Good morning and welcome to worship on this rainy Sunday morning. We're sorry that we are not together in Grant Park this morning, but we are grateful for the joys of technology, right, that allow us to come together and to still worship wherever we are. And so friends, this morning, as we begin worship, I want you to be comfortable where you are. I hope that you are dry. I hope maybe you have a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. And you're in, you have a great worship service in store for you this morning. And so friends, today as we worship, in all times and in all places, God is with us. God's love flows over and around us, filling us in hope. And so we shout for joy. We sing praises to God, and we are ready to become disciples of Jesus Christ. And so as we come to the Lord to worship this day, we ask that God would make us ready. Let us continue to worship. Today's scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 11 to 31. Hear now what the Spirit is saying to the church. All these things are produced by the one and same Spirit who gives what he wants to each person. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts, and all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. We were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Certainly the body isn't one part, but many. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does that mean it's not part of the body? 
If the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, does that mean it's not part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, what would happen to the hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, what would happen to the sense of smell? But as it is, God has placed each one of the parts in the body just like he wanted. If all were one and the same body part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts, but one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are the most necessary. The parts of the body that we think are less honorable are the ones we honor the most. The private parts of our body that aren't presentable are the ones that are given the most dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the part with less honor so that there won't be division in the body and so the parts might have mutual concern for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, the ability to help others, leadership skills, different kinds of tongues. All aren't apostles, are they? All aren't prophets, are they? All aren't teachers, are they? All don't perform miracles, do they? All don't have gifts of healing, do they? All don't speak in different tongues, do they? All don't interpret, do they? Use your ambition to try to get the greater gifts, and I'm going to show you an even better way. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey, St. Paul kids, it's Miss Annie. We are here today in the sanctuary, as you can see, which is awesome, I'm so glad. I wanted to give you a few reminders. Number one, if you aren't signed up for VBS, tell your parents to sign you up for VBS. It's gonna be so fun, it's gonna be amazing. Our theme is Knights of the North Castle, so we're gonna be pretending to be knights all week. I'm here for it, I hope you are too. Secondly, if you would like to help out with VBS, we have plenty of volunteer slots open. All right. So I'm gonna be reading you a book today. It's called, When God Made the World, by Matthew Paul Turner. I'm gonna to try to show you the pictures the best I can. In the very beginning, before anything was, before God started doing what it is God does, when all that existed was wide open space, God imagined a universe and began to create. God hung trillions of lights, stars big and stars bright. God turned the dark sky into a glorious sight. God put planets in places with moons in some cases and galaxies that reach the outermost spaces. God made comets that fly with tails through the sky and asteroids and meteors that sometimes zoom by. And with cosmic explosions, God set space in motion causing planets to orbit their suns with devotion. And somewhere amid all the swirling light, inside a cluster of milky white, among stars and planets and cosmic dust, God made a place for the story of us. Because when God made the world, God displayed heaven's glory for you and for me and for all the world's stories. Our planet, God made a blue and green sphere and designed it to orbit the sun once a year. God made daytime and nighttime, climates and seasons and all kinds of weather that varies by region. God made continents and oceans, islands and seas, a north and a south pole that God put in deep freeze. That's my favorite one. God carved rivers and brooks, mountains and caves, made beaches with sand and huge crashing waves. How many of you have been to the beach this summer? God made tropics and plateaus, glaciers and meadows, marshes and tundras and erupting volcanoes. 
God made some places high with peaks to in the sky and places where snowflakes still fall in July. And in quite a few spots, God made it so hot. Should you visit, just know you must drink a lot. God made valleys so low and geysers that blow and under earth's surface, God put well springs that flow. Then, with gardens and forests and other things green, God made earth come to life using soil and seed. God made cypress and pines, bushes and vines, all kinds of trees with leaves God designed. Plants full of flavor like basil and thyme, and trees that grow citrus like grapefruit and lime. God made flowering plants and plants that enchant. While most you can touch, God made some that you can't. Roses, be warned, are prickly with thorns, and there's an African melon, God covered in horns, and poison ivy's backlash, giving you a rash. Wherever it touches, you'll itch and you'll scratch. But don't let that stop you. Run barefoot through grass. Pick a flower or two or a bouquet, perhaps. Find a tree you can climb or with a seat and some twine. Build your very own swing or a backyard zip line. Or into a forest you go to escape. Give thanks to God for all that God made, for the fruit and the syrup, for the trees and the shade. Because when God made the world, God did all that God could to create every detail for our joy and our good. Now what happened next is a mystery at best, but God made a bird and that bird made a nest. So God filled the sky, perhaps over time, with birds and more birds and most learned how to fly. God made bluebirds and blackbirds, big birds and small birds, a few birds quite absurd, and the loudest birds you've ever heard. Crows crowed, doves cooed, chickens clucked, owls, owls hooed, robins chirped, pheasants whirred. The world got noisy when God made birds. Then the oceans God filled with fish, sharks, and krill, creatures God made with fins and with gills, swordfish and trout, fish sleek and fish stout and whales that God made to breathe through a spout. God made sea rays and eels, fish red, yellow, or teal, and some fish so odd they hardly look real. Like a fish that has fangs or a monster-like face, or a fish that flies or makes its body inflate. And wherever a river, ocean, or sea touches dry land, there's likely to be all sorts of creatures living their lives. On land and in water, that's how they survive, like otters and frogs, turtles on logs, and crocodiles gathering in swampy bogs. And then God made cows, horses, and goats, and God made gibbons with inflatable throats. God planned lions to roar and tigers to pounce, and kangaroos, God thought, let's make you bounce. God made bears to growl, moles to plow, and under full moons, coyotes to howl. Donkeys brayed, giraffes bleated, jaguars prayed, rhinos stampeded, bunnies hopped, Beavers chopped, and in muddy pools, hippos plopped. I hope you get to plop into a pool this summer. Yes, all living creatures, from whales to snails, from those covered with feathers to those covered with scales, each god designed with a home in mind to develop and evolve if needed over time. Because when God made the world, every creature on earth became a part of life's circle, having value and worth. And God made people, people like you and me, people with souls, people with stories, a global family tree. God made us all flesh and bone, covered in skin, and made our bodies to have hearts beating within. God gave us bellies and legs, fingers and toes, and fashioned our faces with eyes, mouth, and a nose. God made our bodies uniquely equipped for walking and talking, to eat and to skip. God wired our love and feel pain, to process and learn, to read and retain. But despite all we share, we're also unique. God made us all human with just a few tweaks. Each of our faces, bodies, and traits, our skin tones, our features, God did create. God made some people shy and some people loud and some, and the world started spinning. The story God wrote was just a beginning. All right, St. Paul kids, that was a great book and it talks about how all of us are made differently and how God loves us so much. And that might be a little bit of what we're gonna talk about today. Pray with me. Ready, pray. Dear God, thank you for making me exactly who I am. Thank you for loving me, all the parts of me, even the ones sometimes I don't like. God, we love you and we praise you. Amen.
Hey, all, sorry if we had some technical difficulties. We're figuring it out. Now, if I've learned anything from having a child, okay, let's be honest, I've learned a lot from having a child, tons of it. But what I've learned specifically for today is it doesn't matter if you have the newest or flashiest or best new age toy, your kid's gonna wanna play with the cardboard box, right? Kids will play with anything but the toys we give them. Just this last week, we were on vacation and my daughter Jordan was carrying around the dog's bowls. Empty, of course. Now, if they hadn't been empty, she made short work of that. But she would empty it and carry the bowls around and just played with them. And I mean, this doesn't include the number of sticks and stones and shoes and bags, all sorts of things she likes to play with. I mean, why do we even bother with toys? And I know that I am not alone in this, which is probably why our next toy in our summer series, Toy Stories, is no surprise. Because it's, well, it's a potato. Y'all, it's a potato. <laughs> Apparently, the creator of the potato head knew that kids would play with just about anything. And so he created the potato head back in 1949, and it had been manufactured as just the body parts. They were actually toys that you would get out of cereal boxes, and you could get an arm in one and a leg in another, and you would put it on your own potato at home because kids like to play with just about anything. Now, in 1953, Mr. Potato Head got to meet Mrs. Potato Head, and it wasn't until 1964 that Mr. Potato Head was sold with the plastic body that we know of today. And then in 1987, I love this part, he lost his pipe, he used to have a pipe, and he became the official spokesbud, if that's a word, for the American Cancer Association. And then, of course, later on, he became part of the Toy Stories movies, which made him famous again. And then in 2021, Hashbro dropped the honorific Mr., and now it's just Potato Head even though you can still get the individual characters of Mr. and Mrs. But this toy has been through lots of iterations in its life, even though it's, it's a potato, y'all. It's just a potato. But we know that this toy isn't just about the potato, right? It's about the body parts that are connected to it. There's two feet, there's eyes, there's arms, there's legs, there's everything you need to make a potato come to life. Everything you need to make a body which is what our scripture passage about, is about today. It's about a body, or the body, the body of Christ. You see, in the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul is working hard to dispel divisions. Sounds familiar, right? Folks were fighting, they were arguing, they were putting folks in categories and judging them, labeling them. Jews were claiming that Greeks weren't quite holy enough, and the Greeks were doing the same thing. And men were trying to subject women, and free men were claim, claiming that they were superior to slaves. It was a mess. And it's almost as if each of these different groups were staking claim on God, saying, well, I'm in this group, so clearly my gifts are to be valued over others. And meanwhile, Paul is watching all of this going, no, no. And so Paul uses a visual, a potato head, or a body. He says, the body is all one. And yes, each of you are different, it's true, but you and your gifts are what make up the body of Christ, what unify the body of Christ. Your differences aren't here to divide, but to build up and to, to unify. And isn't this a much needed message for the world we find ourselves in right now? I mean, we're in the middle of Pride Month. And then just yesterday, we celebrated Juneteenth, the day commemorating when enslaved people truly experienced freedom. You see, we look at these passages and we think, wow, those first century people were messed up. They fought about everything. But y'all, we're not that different. We might say with the words that we're all the same, except then we go out on the street and we see someone begging for food and we might devalue them. Or we might say, man, I'm glad I'm not like those people. Or my favorite is when we turn on the news and we say, goodness, Republicans are all blank. Or Democrats are all blank. 
Or, my gosh, those youth these days, they have no work ethic. What is wrong with them? Even their music. We all make judgments. And sometimes we also place values on those judgments. Now, some of you may be thinking about this and be like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that I was doing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. From now on, everyone is exactly the same. Well, that's a start. But Paul was trying to get at a little bit more. I mean, let's look at this potato head now. All right, if every piece of this potato head was the same, would we have an actual body? Or would we have this freaky creation? You all see that? That is a potato head made completely of arms. That's right. Mr. Potato Head doesn't come to life unless he has all the different parts. That's what makes the potato head more interesting. And friends, this is the same with the body of Christ. You see, we are all different, and we are all valuable. The one body cannot function without many members. You just can't. And so Paul is basically saying, hey, guys, what you think are certain gifts that you want, you think that's the end-all, be-all, but it's not the case. Because if you were all an eye, how would we walk anywhere? If you were all an arm, how would we be able to see anything? But we need the feet being the feet, the knees being the knees, the arms being the arms, the eyes being the eyes, the nose, everything. And everything is good because they're doing the job that they're meant to do. And not one job is more important than any other job. All of them are important. And so there are two things that I want you to walk away with from this, with this message today from Paul. The first has to do with things outside of the church. The second has to do with things inside, though they overlap a lot. You see, we as a society, we are stronger when we value our differences. As I mentioned, yesterday was Juneteenth. It was the day that we celebrated when slave, enslaved folks were finally free. And this happened almost two years after the Emancipation Proclamation because of the way that news traveled at the time. And honestly, if you've known, Juneteenth is now a federal holiday, which is a huge step for us. But friends, it's just one step. We still have more steps to go. We have to see that we are all different, that we all were created differently, but because of that diversity, we can come together in unity. It's about unity, not uniformity. And so as we are celebrating our differences, we can value those differences so that we can function better as a society. And this is the same inside of the church. We need a lot of different gifts and graces to function. I joke with our finance committee all the time because, y'all, I can't do what they do. Thank goodness they have those gifts and skills. And the same is true with all of our committees, with our trustees who give of themselves to make our building so beautiful and function. And then, I mean, look at our choir here. I can't make music in the same way that they can. Thank goodness that they are here to make our worship more full and more praiseworthy. Friends, there are many parts that work together and each complement each other. Each makes us stronger, more meaningful, more effective, more loving, and more caring. And so, friends, today, I value our differences. I value the different gifts that we have. And I celebrate that we are diverse, but not uniform. And that we can work together so that we're not only functioning better, but so that we're stronger so that we are more full as the body of Christ in the world. And so friends, are you, do you know what your gifts and graces are? And are you using them? That's the kicker, because we need your gifts and graces. We need you so that we can be a better functioning body of Christ, just, just like the Mr. Potato Head. Because we're not all arms, we're not all eyes, we're not all mouths. Instead, we come together to form a more perfect body. And so, friends, if you're still discerning what your gifts and graces are, let's get together and let's chat a little bit, because we need you. We need you and the gifts and the differences that you have so that we can be better together.
And isn't that a great way to look at the body of Christ? May it be so. Amen. St. Paul, as we enter this time of prayer together, I invite you to leave a comment below with a prayer request or concern, and you can know that this church will be praying with you and for you. And with that, I invite you to join me in this time of prayer. Creator God, you tell us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you stitched us together in the wombs of our mothers, that we are something that makes creation very good but lord sometimes it's hard to feel that way sometimes we feel like mr potato head and toy story free when all his body parts are attached to a tortilla shell and every step feels like a struggle we feel as if there is something at odds or something wrong with us this past year and a half has given us a lot of focus about what our bodies can and can't handle having to socially distance or wear masks or take vaccines in order to deal with the limitations that we feel. Lord, there is so much that can cause us to feel that the beauty of your creation is somehow askew in us. And so Lord, please remind us of the beauty of your image that you've instilled in each of us, that each of us is worthy and valuable and beloved. Lord, Sometimes it's not even about ourselves, but how we fit into the world around us. Sometimes when we think, you know, what body part am I? It feels like we're the appendix. No one really knows what we're there for, and it seems like it'd be better off without us. Lord, show us what you have intended for us, that we add something unique and worthy and beloved to all of our communities. Show us what you have intended for us in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our lives. Lord, remind us of your love for us. 
and of the immense worth and belovedness that we have as your children. And Lord, there are many parts, but we are one body, and it is as one body that we pray, as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, even though we are online this week, we still continue to encourage you to give in whatever ways that you are able to. It's because of your gifts and your generosity that we are able to function as the body of Christ. We use those gifts to share the love of Christ with our community. And so you can send a check to the church office. You can also go to our website and click on the donate tab. You can even text the amount that you would like to give. Friends, we are grateful for the ways that you contribute to this body today and every day. we do have a few announcements for you today. You already heard from Miss Annie some of them. Vacation Bible School is quickly approaching. And not only do we want kids to sign up, but we need your help. We need all sorts of help because we are all important and have different gifts. See how I tied that in there? It works, right? So go ahead and sign up to volunteer at Vacation Bible School. And also we have a special announcement from our staff parish relations committee this morning. And I'm going to invite Leslie Truman to come up and give that. Good morning, St. Paul. Uh, as lay leader and part of the SPR committee, I have the arduous task of, of announcing that our Minister of Music, Kevin Hill, has resigned. Now, let me first say that it is nothing that anyone has said to him, anything the church has done, or even the philosophy of what the Methodist Church may be. No, no, he's been a great supporter of that. But it's on a personal note. You see, for uh, as long as we've known him, he has been the musical director uh, at Grady High School, the choral director, and his beautiful wife, Liz, is a choral director at which middle school? Mm -hmm. oh. David T. Howard. David T. Howard, if you didn't hear that. So they're quite busy, plus having their children, uh, Emerson and Carter, about to turn five years old, I can't believe that. But he has decided that it would be much easier for him and his family if he just did one job. We want to thank Kevin for all the wonderful music that he has brought to this church. And do not worry, we are gonna celebrate his, his contributions uh, in a few, in a, about August or September, depending. But uh, please keep them in your prayers, wish them well, and God bless to you both.
Friends, we are all parts of the body of Christ. We all are all important parts, needed parts of the body of Christ. This is what makes us fuller and stronger and better. And we need you. So go into the world, come into the church, go into the community using your gifts and graces so that we can be stronger together. In the name of the one who creates and redeems and sustains. Go in peace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mwah.